the most terrible punishments in China, mutilating, skinning, cooking in a cauldron of oil, Hank. These are terrible punishments that we always think only exist in the levels of hell. But today, please come with me to an Asian country where you and I can witness with our own eyes these terrible punishments taking place every day. First, take a deep breath and prepare yourself mentally as strongly as possible, because what we are about to witness next is really scary. And if you're ready, then without further ado, here are the craziest and most horrifying punishments that have ever existed in China. Mutilating on the Among the heaviest death sentences in feudal China, mutilating was considered a torture with an unmatched level of brutality. Mutilation in Chinese means penetrating slowly, symbolizing the action of cutting off a piece of meat with a drumbeat. In feudal China, those who committed treason, rebellion, parasite, etc. were considered mutilating. There are many records left about the process of mutilating. The prisoner was tied to the pole. Then the executioner began to use a sharp knife to cut off pieces of flesh until he could no longer survive. The snakehead meat will be displayed in public for deterrence purposes. Compared to other death penalty methods, mutilating is the most horrifying type of torture. The prisoner will be in extreme pain but cannot lose his life quickly because the executioner is not only responsible for cutting the flesh, but also the Vim does not lose his life before achieving the prescribed number of cuts. In some documents, the executioner will normally rest and eat during the execution of the sentence, ensuring that the victim must endure at least 300 stabs before he can die. Even more cruel during the crime process, they will not be supported with any... The crime of mausoleum began to appear in the Northern Song Dynasty during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period, approximately from 907 to 960, to punish those who were disrespectful, unfilial, traitors, and traitors. By the Song Dynasty, this form was more widely used and became increasingly popular throughout the following dynasties. The sentence of burial still existed in the Manchu Qin era until Mao Zedong's government came to power in 1949 when this punishment was abolished. Number 9. Drop into a cauldron of boiling oil, similar to mutilating prisoners executed by this terrifying torture method, are often people who have committed serious crimes such as treason, opposing the emperor, or killing their parents. This type of torture uses an oil cauldron large enough to hold a person inside. There is an oil cauldron filled with water oil inside and underneath is a pile of firewood piled up. The prisoner will be dropped into a boiling cauldron of oil and will not survive after only a few seconds of struggling. This punishment even has a more upgraded version which is that the prisoner will be put into a cauldron of oil while it is still cool and boiled with it. One of the reasons why ancient China applied this punishment was because of the great deterrent it could bring. Executions often take place publicly, witnessed by hundreds or even thousands of people. Therefore, this punishment was maintained for thousands of years of Chinese history. In the Chronicles of Criminal Law, it was mentioned twice that this was the simplest but most cruel cooking punishment in China's 5,000 years of history. In ancient times, when the Zhou dynasty was in decline and the laws were not strict, the kings often applied brutal methods to punish the people. During the Warring States period, there were many horrifying examples of killing people by cooking them to death. One of the most famous Chinese stories is the incident of Yu Wang, when he was so angry that he drank a gallon of soup containing his son's meat. Yu Yang, a general of the country of Wei, was fighting against the country of Zhongshan. That time his son was in Zhongshan country, and the king of that country assassinated Yu Yang's son by cooking his son's meat into soup and sending it to him. It is worth noting that King Trung's son emphasized that it was his son's meat. Next, Yuong, despite knowing the painful truth, still calmly drank the entire pot of soup, showing his determination that nothing could stop his intention to take revenge on Trung Son country. And thanks to that fierceness, Yu Yang's army quickly defeated the Zhongshan kingdom. In ancient times, many princes also used this method to deal with political opponents. The reason why history books do not record it is probably the main reason is because the rulers themselves knew that this method was cruel and were afraid of leaving a devastating impression on future generations, historians may not dare to write for fear of anger and punishment. Full horse break, the prisoner did not survive after his flesh was slowly torn into pieces, a hundred times more painful than being beheaded or drinking poison. The four-horse break was a punishment used in feudal China, 
The prisoner's forelimbs were tied to four ropes connected to four horses. In addition, there are four horse trainers to motivate the horses to run. When the execution begins, the jockeys will spur the horse to gallop in four different directions. Otherwise, they will scream loudly to scare the horse away, causing the four ropes to be pulled taut, causing the prisoner's limbs to be divided into many pieces. Punishment is carried out in public. There is also another variation, which is the five horse dismemberment with the fifth rope fixed at the prisoner's neck. As the name suggests, the sinner must be pulled apart by four horses. The four horse break originated precisely from the Qin dynasty. During the Han and Tang dynasties, this punishment became more popular, specifically used to punish those who committed Li's majeste and treason. However, there is no specific record of the number of cases that were punished because the following dynasties hardly used it. Number 6. Wooden Horse Punishment Patriarchy society in ancient China was extremely harsh on unfaithful women, using brutal torture such as being forced to ride a wooden horse through the streets or whipping them with leather whips. Of these two punishments, being forced to ride a wooden horse is said to be many times more terrible than being beaten with a whip. Ancient Chinese society respected men and looked down on women, and a woman who only smiled at strangers of the opposite sex was considered unrighteous. Those who commit adultery will be considered prostitutes or prostitutes. The wooden horse punishment or wooden horse is the punishment of forcing women to ride dildos on horseback to prevent the female prisoner from struggling. Four nails were used to fix the prisoner's legs, then four men would carry the wooden horse down the street. The bearers in front will sound broken gongs and punctured drum. For everyone to witness, people absolutely do not use good drums and good gongs to distinguish themselves from the similarly noisy appearance of district officials. When receiving this punishment, it is considered that the woman no longer has any dignity because she will be forced to take off all her clothes, then tied tightly and forced to sit on the cosplay part of a man's sensitive organ on his back. The wooden horse was then stigmatized throughout the upper and lower villages. It don't stop there. What was more terrifying was that these victims continued to be brutally tortured by being beaten with thorn branches. Having just been beaten, she was still captured and shout, I am a prostitute plotting to kill my husband. Everyone please come and see me. Wooden horse punishment hit the vital point of ancient women. Honor, even though they were not physically abused, mentally, even if they were lucky enough to survive, they would not have the face to live any longer. Number 6. Castrating Castration was an extremely popular punishment in feudal China. Male castrating includes male genital mutilation. Male genital mutilation requires the operator to have surgical skills because it cuts six arteries. History of the Tang Dynasty once recorded that. After a person is castrated, the wound is susceptible to infection and fatal stroke. To survive, that person must stay in a secret room like a silkworm room and squat in an environment without wind and sunlight to gain more time, more than a hundred days, so that the wound does not get infected and gradually heals. In the end, men are just like women. Physically, they are still male, but their endocrine behavior tends to be feminine. Because the testicles are removed, male hormones cannot be produced, and female hormones that have been secreted become the prisoner's main hormones. Although the victim can be kept alive if well cared for, the humiliation to them is immense. This form is used mainly by kings with mandarins who have made great contributions to the country but have committed major crimes. The king will use this punishment to keep them alive, but after receiving the punishment, these people will have to go through a painful life. To date, the only living witness who has ever suffered this execution is a eunuch of emperor, Wangshu XI Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. This person talked about his celibacy. I was lucky to be able to walk, because there were people who couldn't stand up to walk after that cruel surgery. They did not survive because they could not urinate after three days or because the infection was too severe. Those were the most painful and tragic days of my life. All the mutilated male genital organs of pure people are kept by the executioner. These treasures are carefully preserved and sold back to the owner upon request. Usually the treasures will return to the owner before the eunuchs go to the grave. Skinning. In Chinese history, flaying was a very serious punishment for horrific crime, crimes such as treason, rebellion, and king murder. This method has existed since the Shang period but became more popular during the Song Dynasty. Finally, officials ended the use of skin peeling during the Song Dynasty. This is used to deter potential criminals and coerce detainees to produce information. 
The skin peeling process is very painful and it can take many hours for the victim to die. There are many different methods of flaying depending on the crime and social state of the person being punished. For example, sharp weapons are often used on ordinary people, and the process is quite direct. As for nobles and officials, skin binding took place more slowly and carefully to preserve the body's shape for public display. Using leather to make leather goods or display is also part of this punishment. In one famous case, the flaying of rebel leader Fang Lao during the Song Dynasty was carried out publicly to serve as a warning to those who dared to challenge the government's authority. This highlights the use of this punishment, not only in crime control, but also to intimidate and set an example for others. Many Chinese emperors and empresses love to skin their opponents. Emperor Hongxuan ordered the skinning of 5,000 women in 1396. Hard labor, also known as prison labor, it was widespread in ancient Chinese history. This is a form of forcing criminals to perform physical work such as mining, construction, or farming, often under harsh and brutal conditions. The purpose of imposing this penalty is to deter crime and provide a source of cheap labor for the state. In ancient China, hard labor was often used as punishment for many crimes, including theft, bribery, prostitution, and drug trafficking. The severity of the punishment depends on the type of crime and the social status of the offender. Those sentenced to hard labor were often sent to remote areas of the country, such as mines, cobblestones, or salt fields, where they worked for hours under harsh conditions. Many passed away from exhaustion, malnutrition, and disease, and the death rate among these workers was often very high. The use of manual labor was not only intended to control the labor force, but also to maintain social. For example, during the Han period, prisoners were used as workers to build public projects such as the Great Wall and for military campaigns, helping the state save on labor costs and maintain a large workforce without relying on free labor or conscription. The punishment of manual labor continued throughout Chinese history, and only in the modern period began to be gradually phased out. In 1957, the Chinese government abolished this punishment, citing concerns about human rights abuses and the need to modernize the punishment system. Amputating Amputation was common in ancient China for more than 1,000 years, until it was abolished in the 2nd century BC, according to a 2019 study in the Chinese Tenghua Law Journal. According to historians, amputation of one or both feet was one of the five punishments for slaves enforced since the second millennium BC by the emperors of the Engzhirai dynasty, the first dynasty of ancient China. There is plenty of historical evidence of this practice and a Chinese official in the first millennium BC complained about the need to find special shoes for amputees. Chinese tradition records that the five punishments were in effect until they were abolished by emperor one of the Han Dynasty in the second century BC and replaced by fines, beatings, and hard labor. Wrong in exile. Historical writings and works of art document the practice of amputation in ancient China, including bronzes from the first millennium BC. These works depict people losing a leg or foot as punishment. Traditionally, they were hired as gatekeepers. Today in China, there is no longer this punishment, but in another part of the world, it is still applied which is the land occupied by the Taliban rebels. In the 1990s, the Taliban used this method of execution in public places for thieves. In 2021, the Taliban continues to announce they will restore these measures according to Islamic law. For convicted robbers, the punishment was cutting off a hand. For thieves and robbers on the main road, the prisoner will have a hand and a foot cut off. The difference in applying these punishments in the future is that the judges will include women and the execution may no longer be in public. It is truly terrifying that in this century, human society still has such punishments. These groups of people are trying to turn people there into Chinese slaves thousands of years ago. Number two, shun of three lines of ancestry. This punishment not only applies to the sinner, but also applies to their entire family within many generations. This is a dire punishment for those who plot great treason under the monarchy. The punishment of execution of three lines of ancestry is based on traditional family relations in ancient Chinese society, usually applied to the most serious crimes according to the concept of Chinese feudalism, including lying to the king, insulting the royal family, plotting rebellion, treason, etc. In an absolute monarchy, the punishment was to eliminate the after-effects uproot. 
the influence of criminals and their relatives, and at the same time strengthen the emperor's supreme authority. Burial execution or beheading are the main execution methods in the execution of three lines of ancestry. The execution of three lines of ancestry is said to have originated from the Shang dynasty in Chinese history. At that time, this punishment was called Dui Dian, executing criminals along with their children. During the Qin period, the execution penalties of three lines of ancestry became more severe under Qin Shi Huang when expanded to the scope of three clans. Five clans, five clans. Seven clans, Essen clans. To maintain his rule, Qin Shi Huang stipulated that, that act of deception, defamation of the emperor, and research on forbidden literary works would be executed by three lines of ancestry. This increase in tyranny accelerated the Qin dynasty's demise. During the Sui dynasty, this punishment was eliminated by Fu Ruken, but later restored and extended to the Nine Clans line line. During the Ming Dao period, executions of three lines of ancestry occurred more frequently. Even during the later Ming Chengzu period, he ordered the execution of three lines of ancestry to ten clans. In the Fanzuo Ru case, killing a total of 873 people, not only the nine Fangzhi Yaru family lines, but also relatives, his disciples also suffered because they were merged into the tenth line by Ming Chengzu. Countless people in the house were involved, so why didn't they run away, in fact? It's not that people don't want to run away, it's that they don't dare to run away. Firstly, traffic is not convenient. In ancient times, transportation was backward, and travel was very inconvenient. So wherever one ran, it was difficult to escape the court's capture network. Second, there is nowhere to go. The ancient household registration system was quite perfect. Therefore, it is very difficult to move from one place to another without a travel document. Entering and leaving the city gate must go through many levels of inspection. Even if you accidentally escape the city, it will be difficult to survive elsewhere. Third, a desire to die. Even if the criminal escapes, his family members have all been sentenced to death. So what's the point of staying alone in this world? Therefore, many people are simply too lazy to escape. And even if they want to, they don't. Furthermore, the ancient Chinese were influenced by the idea that if the king wants his subjects to die, his subjects must also die. In feudal society, where power pervades everywhere instead of thinking about the impossible escape, it is better to find a way to be forgiven by the emperor, thereby avoiding the fate of being murdered. Number one's punishment of the piper. Among the punishments of the feudal court at that time, there was a type of punishment that sounded very elegant. Dan Piper, Pluck Piper, but contrary to its name, this punishment was so cruel that it could not be ignored. Who can endure it within one song? It seems that Emperor Zhu Yuancheng loved cruel tortures. In addition to the flaying punishment, he also came up with the This Pie Woman punishment. Once a criminal is subjected to this punishment, his life can only be worse than death, which is even more painful than that of a mausoleum. Before execution, the prisoner's shirt is stripped or pulled up, exposing his ribs. The executioner took a small knife and cut each rib until the skin peeled off the flesh. The reason for this name is also because the execution process is very similar to the act of plucking the strings of a pipe. The executioner considered the prisoner's ribs to be the strings of a piper, causing the prisoner to experience bouts of pain that almost no one could endure for one piece of music. The solution was to compromise with the royal bodyguard and reveal any information so they would not continue with the execution. Piper was once considered the cruelest punishment at that time. It could erode a person's will and be tortured both physically and mentally. At that time, there was a Mandarin named Ming Shengzu. He was executed by a Pai woman, his whole body clothes were stripped off, and the bodyguard's men used hooks to stick into his ribs and then pulled him back up. Wu Hung went and immediately fainted in pain. The royal bodyguard washed the hook with salt water and then hooked it on his ribs to wake him up. No more than a few times, Wang Wenin pleaded guilty. Piper is the best in feudal punishments in China. The person being executed just heard this name and was so scared that they immediately fainted. Although cruel, the royal bodyguard and Dong Cheng almost achieved their goal thanks to that. Then, with the fall of the Mingda period, the application of this penalty also decreased year by year. Coming to King Kaio, the punishment of servant woman completely disappeared. Punishment is inherently a measure to deter criminals, so historically, dynasties have paid great attention to amending and building laws. 
However, in the feudal period, the two words punishment were always understood as cruel, even brutal, forms of punishment. The punishments mentioned above are in fact only one of the few dire punishments used under the absolute monarchy. 